Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Manny. My guests on the program is not just a giant in size, but a giant of the legal profession. Onweze Chukujinka Joe Okocha is a legal luminary, a former attorney general, the 19th president of the Nigerian Bar Association, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and the founder and managing solicitor of the law firm of Okocha and Okocha. Born on June 29, 1953 in Onicha, Anambra State, Nigeria, he studied at the University of Ife from 1973 to 1977. He is a proud alumnus of both the prestigious University of Ife, Ileife, now the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, where he obtained his LLB in 1977. He was called to the bar in Nigeria in 1978, while in the same year, Okocha began his first job during his NYSE as an assistant lecturer, Faculty of Law, in the University of Meiduguri, Bornu State, Nigeria. Next, he became the legal aid counsel for the Ministry of Justice and then accepted the position as a legal practitioner. He has held many esteemed positions, too numerous to mention. He has been in several committees of the Nigerian Bar Association, including a member of the National Executive Committee of the Association, in addition, a member of the Disciplinary Committee of the Nigerian Bar Association, Chairman, Nigerian Bar Association, Port Harcourt Branch. He was appointed a life bencher in 2007 and became the Chairman of the Order of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He was the former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice of River State. He is also a life member of the Honorable Body of Benches, the highest body of excellence in the legal profession in Nigeria, charged with the statutory responsibility of admitting lawyers to the Nigerian Bar. In 1995, he was made a senior advocate of Nigeria. He became the president of the Nigerian Bar Association in 2000, making him the Millennium President of the NBA. In the 43 years he has served in the legal profession, Okocha spends free time writing and has several published legal journals to his credit. OCJ Okocha, as he is popularly known in the legal profession, is married to Mrs. Ifoma Okocha and their marriage is blessed with children. Welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice Thank seeing you. you again. Yes, sir, for I mean, so long. You were Millennium President of the MBA. How did that make you feel? Well, how it made me feel was a great sense of satisfaction, a great sense of achievement. And happily, my tenure was 2000, the year of my election, to 2002, which is why I'm also known as the Millennium President of the Nigerian Bar Association. Mm, okay, if I was there then, I would have said congratulations, but all, all, all the same, congratulations. Congratulations are still in order, yes, yes man. Yeah, yes. but you know, come to think of it, you have crisscrossed the legal profession in so many positions. I mean, you're yes. one of the benchers. Correct. Yes, I was just uh, last, I'm the immediate past chairman of the body of benchers. I was a live venture. I was made a live venture in the year 2000. I've been former, I've been attorney general of River States. I've been chairman of the Council of Legal Education. I've been a member of the Federal Judicial Service Commission, the National Judicial Council. So truly, I have uh, traveled too you, far too soon. Yes, <laughs> you are an SAN. Yes, yeah? SAN in 1995. I'm a, I'm a JP. What does that mean? JP. Well, truly, it means it, justice, justice of, of the peace. Of the peace. Justice of the well, peace. People are referring to you as a juju priest. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. One of us, who was also a former Attorney General of River State, uh, B. M. Wifa, became Attorney General in 1984 or thereabouts. He was succeeded by one Acho Obona. And in 1990, I became Attorney General of River State. Now, Adokie Amiesimaka, we call him the Chief Justice of Football, 
also became Attorney General just towards the tail end of the military administrations. And he came up with an idea that all former attorneys general in River State would be made justices of the peace. Mm -hmm. And that was how he conferred that uh, award on us. And we were really sworn in as justices of the peace. But we first said, look, attorneys general make justices of the peace. So he's going to accept his own if people understand that it means that he's a juju priest. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to one bar meeting and I told them this story of a juju priest. And they started calling me, whenever they say JP, everyone will call us juju priest. <laughs> okay, but I mean, this is the first time it would seem that uh, a known SAN is becoming president of the NBA. No. Is that no, correct? No, no, no. Senior advocates are seen to be leaders already by virtue of the fact that they were senior advocates. In court, we lead, you follow. But there's no such qualification to be, SN, uh, to be NBA president. And so when a viable candidate, and you know we now have what we call universal suffrage, every lawyer who has paid his practicing fee can register to vote for the election. And once you do so, you know the young lawyers are more than we are, senior advocates. So they voted, and they voted a candidate of their choice, and they won. When you became NBA president in the millennium, I mean, you're credited for democratizing the bar. The, the, the bar. Yes. What did you do? Well, first thing I did was to begin to move meetings of the Nigerian Bar Association around the country. It was not so before. No. And that was one of the issues I had with the big men in the profession that they, we call them the babas of our profession. And I said, the Bar Association doesn't begin and end in between Lagos and Ibadan. We must take the NBA meetings to other nooks and crannies of Nigeria so that people will know more about our profession. So after I was elected, first place we held a meeting was Gombe. Gombe, you know how far Gombe is? And everybody came. Then we held a meeting in Zaria. We held a meeting in uh, Oshobo. In fact, the most interesting was that we also took the meeting to Adwekiti. And one of the babas in our profession, Chief Afeba Balola, was so happy that we brought the MBA to Adwekiti. You may have left out, as MBA presidents, the plight of young lawyers. No, no. What have you done for them? When I was president, the debate arose that the young lawyers were not being properly paid. Some lawyers who hired young lawyers, we call them junior lawyers, were not even paying them salaries or allowances. They would say, oh, take this file, go to uh, Yenegoa. This is the transport money. And truly, that's how some of us started. We were living on transport money. They give you transport money. You go to the court. You see another colleague who has a car. You ask for a ride, and you get back without spending all of the transport money. So some small extra was left in your pocket. But we felt, when I became president, that any lawyer who is employed in a law firm ought to receive a fair, even if you don't call it salary, a monthly allowance. What, in your opinion, is a good monthly allowance? At that time, we recommended that it cannot be across the board. Some cities have, you know, good practice. We said the minimum for Lagos should be 50,000 Naira per month. The minimum for places like Enugu or Nature should be 40,000 a month. The minimum for places like far-flung uh, village cities you follow anywhere there's a high court. Because you see, let's be honest, uh, Manny, the profession is not as profitable as it used to be. And we are now very many. When I came out to join practice after I returned from England, five major law firms in Port Harcourt were ready to employ me. Five. Now, young lawyers, unfortunately, have to move from one office to the office to the other, looking for employment. And invariably, they can't. Because first, the business is not as lucrative as it used to be. Second, there are many of them being produced by the law school. 
is one of our topical issues now is the law school not producing more is than that the Nigerian why, is that market why can You take. are a member of the uh, body, of benchers. body of benchers. Is that why a lot of people are failing in the law school? No. The reason why many are failing, let me be frank with you, is that the products from the various faculties of law are not up to standard. So the problem cannot be the problem of the law school. It is a problem of the background from which the particular students have come. I mean, you are an insider. You yes. know, what gives you headache? What more gives you headache about the legal profession? Well, that is one, as you say, what more? The other thing that gives me headache is discipline and decoro. We have a lot of cases of professional misconduct in the profession. And the sad reality of it is that, yes, these lawyers are looking for ways to get rich. As you or say, even, a man has... survival. Yes, some for survival too. A man has started for four years, then... And you know, when you say two years, I had to correct and say it is one year at the law school. Some spend three years, even after graduation, before getting for into the law school. Students. students. Yes. So, the quality of the students coming to the law school is not very good. So many of them fail in the process, unfortunately. Now, wh wh when you say many of them fail in the process, what measures have you put in place to you know, rectify this situation? Because, I mean, the last uh, law bar exams, I understand they were just only about 23 first class out of a total of 5,000 students. students. You are that, correct. That is not good enough. It is not. Quite frankly, it is not. But I can tell you, the measures we've tried to put in place is first to be serious and determined in the accreditation of the universities that run faculties of law. Because they are the ones who produce the law graduates with LLB, Bachelor of Laws. Now, some of the products that enter those universities do not have a good background from secondary school. Which is what I've said. In this country, we need to overhaul the educational system. Do you tell me that Amechi was, is like a younger brother to you? Yes, is that not right? yes, yes, yes. We come from the same ethnic nationality. He's from the Query local government area. I'm from the Obiwapo local government area, which is the same local government area which our current governor comes from. The governor in between them, Celestino Mejia, also came from the same town as Amechi. How do you think he has fared in the transportation Oh, he's, he's doing well. He's doing well, and I give him credit. Of course, at some point, we had some disagreements. Yeah, obviously, but, uh, obviously, uh, I was, I, I was even for... going to come into where you say, you are a friend uh, or uh, a brother, a brother, is a brother, brother. to you, yeah. and then Wiki, you work with Wiki these days. I see you all the time on television. Yes. Why is it difficult to call come bring the two together to resolve those personal problems they seem to have. I have made several efforts, and I continue to make several efforts. I have joined three or four groups seeking to reconcile Amechi and Wike. Don't forget that Amechi and Wike, we are two peas in a pod. What's your opinion of what Wike is doing? In oh, the Wike is performing superlatively very well. As you say, you see me commissioning projects. Just on the 30th of June, he had me flag off the ninth flyover he's building in Port Harcourt City. He said he'll build 10 before he finishes. The 10th one is for Rumo Kurosi. Is River State all about flyovers? Is it? Roads and infrastructural development are very important to us. One of those he just commissioned two. He brought one former Minister of Police Affairs to commission the road to Opobo, an island kingdom, which was only accessible by boat, by river craft. He has built a road through Ogoni land into Opobo town, passing through some communities in Andoni, riverine areas, which had never seen roads. They used to go to a place called Car Waterside to go to Andoni. They go to Corner Waterside, Ogoni Territory, 
to go by river craft to Pobo or go across to the place they call Ikotabasi, Igwenga, where the aluminium spelter plant is, to take river crafts, boats and canoes to cross to Pobo. But this governor has built a road. Admittedly, and he was quite honest about it, it was Odili, Dr. Peter Odili, who conceived the project. But he has taken it and completed it. And we could drive into... Yeah, my number of Opobo and Opobo people turned out en masse. And Koro people, another riverine community, turned down en masse. And only people turned out en masse. Pick a question. Here we go. Lucky deep. Yep. Wow. Are you sure there are anything? You, are, you okay. just pick one. Okay. You're a massive, you know, man. My massive you know. hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So read the question. Have you ever found yourself on the wrong side of the law before? What were the circumstances? That's interesting. Yes. Have you ever found yourself on the, on the wrong side of the law? Capital, no. Is that so? You have very, never, very, not, not even a traffic offense? Never, never. You know, I was raised by a policeman father. And even at my very young age, my father tried to instill in me discipline. And he always felt that I was a tear away and wanted me to go to military school in 1965 when I was to enter secondary school. So I've grown up with this culture of being a law-abiding citizen. Of course, as a young boy, I got into a few scrapes. But in law, never. Which has been the most favorable or important case you have handled and won ah. in all your 43 years as a lawyer? It's difficult to say, but I think the most sensational was a criminal trial of a young man who was living with his wife. They were attacked by armed robbers, injured, both of them injured. She was injured, a deep cut, with a bottle thrown at her leg. And the medical attendants who treated her didn't know. In fact, it was during the trial I knew that wounds in extremities like legs, if you don't stop the bleeding, can lead to death. This young man himself was injured. They broke a bottle on his head. They used that same broke bottle and then flung it at the wife and he gave her a deep cut in her lower leg. So he was tried for murder. The brothers and sisters of this woman, unfortunate woman, did not believe that the husband did not have a hand in it. She had a lot of money. The woman was into cement importation business and cement uh, trading and other businesses. She had estates in Port Harcourt. She happened to be slightly older than the young man, so they felt that he came to grab her money. For four years, this man was tried for murder. And at the end of the day, he was acquitted and discharged. That's your case? Yes, that is the most, I think, most sensational case I had handled. Challenging as well? It was very challenging. Four years. Going to the prison to visit him, get instructions from him, and there was this chief prosecutor, a police assistant commissioner of the CID that came from Alabon Close. They later formed this thing they call the robbery unit, anti-robbery unit, who was determined because he had taken the side of the relations of this dead woman. That, oh, the husband had a hand in his death. But thank God they were not able to prove anything. And a doctor came to give evidence that the reason why the woman died was that they did not stitch up the wound in her leg. What about your biggest pay? Uh, I think that uh, you don't want the tax man to follow me. I would prefer, <laughs> I would prefer to say nothing about what was my biggest pay. But, but tell me something, o OCJ. Are yeah. you happy with the legal profession? I mean, the judiciary as a whole, in its relationship with the executive, is it free? Um, in, you know, we have this federal character thing. We are structured in states and local governments, and then the federal government is sitting at the top. Some states are getting on well with the federal governments. You know, it is from the federal government that uh, 
resource allocations flow. Those of us in River State and most of the minority states do not feel comfortable about the revenue allocation formula. And that has led to some, you know, unpleasant relationships between some of the states and the federal government. So I also have issues with what the status quo presently is. You follow? We need to sit down and agree as Nigerians what should be the way forward. A lot of people have been talking about restructuring. A lot of people have even been clamoring to secede and form their own kingdoms and uh, states or countries in Nigeria. I don't think that that is the solution. My belief is that we should sit down and talk about our differences. When I was president, it was one of the things I also said to President Obasanjo when we went to pay courtesy call on him, that now that we are back in civilian administration, Nigerians need to sit down and look at this constitution, which was not drafted by us. You follow? Everybody says it was a constitution that was bequeathed to us by the Departing Military Administration. What do you think? I think so, too. Okay. Yes, so we need a new constitution. To, you need a new constitution. Yes, and I believe that the best way to articulate that is by having a national conference. When Adolfo Swabara was the president of the Senate, I sent him a memo. And I said, Senate President, I think that the main duty of the Senate, the National Assembly, in fact, now, is to try and make meaningful amendments to the Constitution. Because under that 1999 Constitution, the only way to amend it is by provisions in that Constitution. But we've seen what has been happening. The current National Assembly, just like the previous ones, have tried here and there. Jonathan set up a constitutional conference or a national conference. So did, uh, what was his name, uh, President Obasanjo. But nothing came out of those things. And those reports are gathering dust on shelves in the, in the, in the corridors of power in Nigeria. Okay. Nigerians need to sit down and agree so that these agitations can be reduced. Let's even take a break from there and uh, take you home. When did you start thinking of getting married? When I got to England, and suddenly, casually, at a party where Ulisa invited me to, I met this young lady. It turned out that she came from a family that we had grown up with in Inugu, which was the capital of the oldest region. And we started a relationship. That was the first time marriage crossed my mind. In year 1979, I was still 26 years old. So that was the first time I thought about marriage. And of course, I proposed to her, and she accepted. But her father, her family... She did? She did. But her father and her family... She did not think about it? No. <laughs> you need to well, know, Manny. What, 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 what qualities, what, what qualities did you bring to the table? I was an eligible bachelor. Okay. As uh, they used to say, tall, dark, and handsome. Mm. I've uh, started with, aging with now. With a swagger. Uh, yes, I always had a swagger. <laughs> I always had a swagger, as you recognize. Your wife, where is she from? My wife is from River State. How Sha many children has she for you now? Oh, four. Two boys, two girls. The first one is uh, a building technologist and a project uh, manager. He has a master's degree. Then I have three other children. My second son is a lawyer with a PhD in law. My two daughters are lawyers, and they have master's degrees in law. That's the house of law. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what do you think are the five items you will take along? No humans, just, you know, five items you will take along with you to this island. My medication. Okay, so then medication. Then I must, I must take my Bible along. In fact, okay. I should have said my Bible first. Okay. A few books to read, and then, of course, you need clothes so that you can keep yourself uh, sheltered from the elements and the insects that are buzzing around all over the place. And then uh, I would say a means of communication. If someone oh. asks you today, what legacy would you have left behind in the legal profession? What would you call it? I feel that I would like to remember that as one who helped to build a legal profession in this country. OCJ, JP, <laughs> SAN. <laughs>
Thank you for being on the program. Thank you, Manny. It's, it's been, been a, a wonderful pleasure. pleasure having you on this program. Thank you, Manny. Thank you. Thank Just you very system. much, OCJ Okocha, the Justice of Peace. I almost said did you please. <laughs> Thank you, Manny. And Thank you. SEN. You are very kind. He's been my guest on the program this week, The Chat. I am Manny. See you next time. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Mm -hmm.